he has a lot of passion for College of Medicine, the university, and the society at large. His administration has been unique. Um, the uniqueness starts in the sense that there are five members of management, four of whom are, whom are women. So we always joke that he runs a woman's administration. The provost is an achiever because he was all about, he was just there for success. When you ask people to make a choice between gold and a good name, while some would go for gold, others would rather go for a good name. Why? Because they know that it takes extraordinary efforts to have the two at one's disposal. Guess what? I found a man who possesses gold and a good name. Professor Emiola Uluwabumi Olakbadi Olaupa is the immediate past provost of the College of Medicine, University of Ibadan. He's an alumnus of the Premier University and also a professor of medicine and surgery. During his time as the provost of the College of Medicine, Professor Lakbadi Olaupa made significant impact and tremendous contribution towards the growth and development of the medical institution. One of his laudable achievements was taking the institution from 10th position in Sub-Saharan Africa and 15th position in Africa to the first in Sub-Saharan Africa and fourth in Africa respectively. According to the 2021 World University Ranking of African Universities based on medicine and dentistry, UI's College of Medicine retained its position as the highest ranked medical school in Sub-Saharan Africa for the second year and ranking number seven on the list in Africa, courtesy of Professor Olakpadi Olaupa. I certainly would like to see the college staying where we are now as number one in Sub-Saharan Africa and perhaps climbing a little bit higher, maybe a tall order in Africa. We're number four in Africa. Uh, the three institutions ahead of us in Africa uh, are Stellenbosch University. They're actually not in Sub-Saharan Africa, which is why we are the number one medical school in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, there's Stellenbosch, which was established in 1710 in South Africa. Uh, University of Cairo is number two, established in 1708. And the University of Mansoura is number three. It was a branch, uh, section, a campus of of uh, University of Cairo, uh, established as well in 1708, uh, but shared off as a separate university in 1976. Uh, so these are institutions that were 18th century institutions uh, with that degree of tradition. It's, it will be tough for us to overtake them. But at least in the next five years, uh, we, we, we can maintain our, our slot. Talking about how he was able to achieve all these great feats, which would only be achieved within a short period of time, the provost gave a comprehensive insight on how it was done. The secret is by ensuring that we uh, engaged our stakeholders. And unbeknown to most people, uh, universities are meant to galvanize the economy of their host community. That includes the medical school. Uh, it is true that we teach about health, but in reality we are a tertiary institution just like the main university. As a tertiary institution, the college plays a significant role in the economic life of its host community, the state and the country in general. The job of a university is to drive the economy of its local community. For us, our community is not just local, it's also national and international. And therefore we have a lot of stakeholders. And what we needed to do was to ensure that we engaged our stakeholders in a manner in which they wished to invest in us. Uh, to that extent, they were, once they were ready to invest in us, they were ready to spend the kind of money uh, that is different from when you are asking for charity. As I try to describe, charity is what you do to the needy. Uh, that means you give them what you think you can afford. Philanthropy is sacrificial giving. 
Uh, that means you give that little bit more, indeed that much more, but then you want to ensure that what you have given uh, is going in the right direction. But when you invest, then you really are looking for returns. It's just that your returns are not necessarily measured in naira and cobble or nickels and dimes, but they're measured in achievements. And that is the highest level of benefaction. And for that, most people will give far more than they would have given when you either go to them for assistance or when you go to them for philanthropy or when you just simply say, help us. The road to success is undoubtedly narrow and wide. But when you are blessed with a team of like-minded individuals of impeccable foresight, the whole journey becomes smooth and straight. Professor Olakpade Olaokba reveals how he and his formidable team jointly proved to critical stakeholders the significance of wealth generation through investment in intellectual expertise. I'm grateful to God that I had the opportunity to serve. Uh, I believe the story would really be a story about service. Uh, it would also be a story about sacrifice. Anybody in a leadership position uh, makes sacrifices. If it's only the sacrifice on your time, the fact that you have to give up some of your personal needs and wants, and the fact that you have to be available to a lot of people at different times of the day, uh, that is sacrificial. Uh, but most importantly, is a period, is a story of satisfaction. Uh, it is important to have uh, put yourself forward uh, and it's to have been able to achieve some of the things you can never achieve all. Uh, some of the things you want to achieve breeds a lot of satisfaction and for that I'm, I'm grateful to the Almighty for having given me that opportunity. So it's sacrifice, sacrifice satisfaction and service to humanity. In every successful journey, there lies an inherent obstacle which might impede progress and bring setback. Professor Olakpa de Olakpa and his team defied all odds by showing how obstacles could be transformed into tentacles of success. The erstwhile provost explains how they blocked several wastes in the system to pave way for infrastructural development. I think the most challenging uh area of running any institution of which this institution is no exception is managing the people uh, they are, our people are not bad people but the circumstances of the country are such that everybody needs to look after themselves uh, and look out for themselves and it's not rocket science to know that if you have 10 people in a committee each one looking after his own interest, then you will have a situation that uh, there would be necessary or unnecessary conflict. And uh, that, I guess, would be the most challenging aspect because uh, there are so many interests to look after. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Ibadan University, of which its College of Medicine is uh, an integral part, is, belongs to everybody. Being the first in Nigeria, everybody has a stake in Ibadan. Even in the face of a global pandemic that silenced the world into a new normal society, the ingenuity of the medical guru was brought to bear. At the unveiling of a novel COVID-19 testing laboratory at the College of Medicine, the provost and some other medical personnel 
decided to test the effectiveness of the lab by carrying out the COVID-19 tests on themselves. Unfortunately, Professor Olakpa Diolakpa tested positive for the disease alongside the deputy provost and two others. However, the ugly development never got him discouraged from extending hands of love to the people as his team seized the opportunity to test a good number of people in the community. About 80% of the elderly tested positive for the disease asymptomatically. He saw the development as a blessing in disguise as he was able to raise funds and got donated COVID-19 equipment from well-wishers, which he used to enhance the completion of the fully equipped COVID-19 laboratory, ranked as one of the top testing labs in the country within two weeks and had it commissioned three days later. I was amazed how some of the things that I initially believed were entirely internal things had international ramifications. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean uh, things that you would uh, think you were discussing with one or two people have this habit of going viral and before you know what is happening, they are receiving phone calls from all over the place. Uh, it's not all bad. Uh, when I was COVID-19 positive, I was receiving calls from New Zealand, from Qatar, from Philippines, and I was like, excuse me, where did you get to hear this? Uh, and uh, with the advent of social media, I mean, you literally don't finish saying something before it's on, online. Um, so that aspect of managing people uh, was perhaps the most challenging. And of course, with people you put together uh, staff, students, alumni, uh, government officers, lay public, everybody. Managing them, it was a challenge. Uh, and uh, it was also very exciting and very interesting. And it's an experience I wouldn't trade for anything. Only a man with unique leadership and visionary quality would achieve all these great feats, together with his team, in the space of four years. The College of Medicine, University of Ibadan, has indeed witnessed historic administration under the leadership of a more determined, highly committed, very hardworking and exceptional Olaupa, whose stainless and sterling performance will continue to reverberate in the annals of the great university's history. His colleagues described him as a listening and very transparent leader who used his leadership position to effect critical change such as transparency in the approval of funds and budgetary system for all faculties and departments, a unique approach towards environmental hygiene, and creating a peaceful atmosphere for staff, students, and members of the community. He's a team worker and a team leader because um, he tried to involve as many people as possible in the management of the College of Medicine. And, um, He's somebody who relates, who has an, op he's open with his leadership roles and these are some of the qualities of a good leader. And apart from that, um, he's open in terms of, he tried to bring in openness into the College of Medicine. Most of the things we do, we want people to know about it, not to praise, but to know what is happening. For example, the, we have a new way of approving money. Before now, people didn't even know how much they had in their account. They have to keep on asking, but now with the openness, transparency in the, in the leadership, he made sure that everybody who has a form of either departmental money or grant money, they have access to their accounts. And before they request for any money, they know how much is left and how much they can request for. He brought in, during these um, four years, um, college experience changes in terms of um, introduction of budgets which wasn't there before and this made people heads of department deans to be prudent in their spending. He has this kind heart towards people. He's a people person and uh, he's warm. If you are close to him he's friendly, he's humorous you know and um, he's a uh, He's generous, he's generous. So many times we have meetings, he will just tell people to order lunch, you know. He's generous. He doesn't like to see people suffer, you know. And um, out of the rules, out of the books, when we have issues, maybe with people in our management or otherwise, he just calls our attentions to it and look for ways by which we can help them.
Professor Laiokpa is always on his toes. There is no dull moment with him. And he's full of ideas. In fact, he's a man of so many words. So if for you to be able to work with him successfully, you also must be able to match his qualities. He's very hardworking, very hardworking, and always on the run. I think I really, he, even though I'm not a lazy person, but he has, I have even gained a lot from him. The professor's seamless relationship with the Alumni Association of the college cannot be overemphasized, as this reflects in their contribution towards the success of the administration and the growth and development of the institution as a whole. We had a fully equipped COVID-19 lab, largely from the funds donated by well-wishers, uh, friends of the college, alumni, and also from the equipment donated by staff because I was able to tell them, well, if I can catch it, you can catch it. So we better have somewhere we can test. And uh, to the glory of God, we commissioned that lab three days after um, I came out of isolation, which means that we built a fully equipped COVID-19 lab in two weeks. And uh, that lab was accredited uh, about four, five, six weeks ago. And uh, according to recent data, we're one of the top testing labs in the country. Some laudable projects embarked upon and commissioned by his administration include decent security posts, the newly renovated Alexandra Brown Hall, hey. the renovated Professor Akinkube Clinical Building, Wall of Lawrence, newly renovated Oshun Toku Auditorium, Professor Latunde Odeku Medical Library, Department of Biochemistry, Department of Physiology Research, six animal houses for the Nathaniel O. Idowu Research Complex, commissioning of the multi-million Nathaniel O. Idowu Multidisciplinary Translational Research Complex in the Physiology and Pharmacology Research Unit by the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Oshimaju fiber optic cabling of most college buildings. He secured the approval of the Senate for the modified Doctor of Medicine MD degree of the university, reopening of the E. Latindio Deco Medical Library and improving library facilities, commissioning of the Nathaniel Idu Clinic and Drugs Trial Unit, which is the first of its kind in Nigeria, and pre-clinical lecture theater. Uh, Ibarakwa project uh, we've opened up to 11 other, uh, to 11 faculties now. That means seven faculties in the main university are working with us. Um, in addition to the four that we have here, uh, students from VET, from uh, social sciences, uh, they're all going to Ibarakwa. So all that shows that you are doing what I said. I hope we'll be in five years' time. Uh, we are trying to galvanize your local resources. That's what the ranking really is about. It's how you are able to affect your, both your local and your international uh, uh, environment with impact. Uh, as a result, uh, if you actually look at the ranking data, it would say that the University of Ibado, that 61% of the uh, global citations of the University of Ibado originate from the College of Medicine. I'm also blessed by being the, not only the only man in a, an all-management team, I'm also the man that is handing over to the first female provost of uh, the College of Medicine. And as I've said, every time they mention that uh, the, my successor is the first female provost, they must not forget to mention the person who handed over to her. Very important. I yeah. just <laughs> as an interesting aside. But my advice is that in any office, um, the first thing that one finds out is about oneself. The first discovery is about yourself. Um, nothing can ever prepare you for yourself. Uh, and my advice uh, to my successor and indeed to all officers who take up any position is to ensure that they have prepared themselves as well as they can because it is not those things that you have prepared for that matter. It's those things that will happen that you couldn't possibly have prepared for, but which will bring out 
hopefully the best and not the worst in you that you need to be worried about. And of course, it is important to be totally reliant on God, but as, as well to be totally reliable to man uh, by ensuring that you, you work with your team and you do the best for the college without personal interests overriding the interests, uh, overriding the collective good. What more can we say of an upright man who has always gone extra mile to achieve greater goals and put lasting smiles on everyone's face? Thank you for your remarkable years in active service, sacrifice to humanity, and the growth and development of the University College of Medicine. We wish you more prosperous years ahead and life full of greater fulfillment and success. Remember, it takes only a hero to possess gold and a good name, just as Professor Olaupa holds a good reputation, that is, a good name, and he took the institution to first and fourth positions from its previous ranking of 10th and 15th in Sub-Saharan Africa and Africa. That is a good name.